good to be in God's house tonight. Praise God. Why don't we stand to our feet and give the Lord some praise. Amen. On Wednesday night, it's good to be in God's house, isn't it? Amen. Let's worship God tonight. Stop praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We have several needs in this house tonight. We'll remember Larry Goal has bladder cancer, 
And then remember Gabby Maynard, she's sick. Buford Jones is sick. Abby Warbritton is sick. Remember Brother Thomas goes for a heart procedure June the 8th. Remember uh, Brother Junior Mayo, they've had a spot on his bladder, going back for some more tests. And they're going to believe that God can heal these. Amen? Any other unspoken requests, let them be known by the uplifting of a hand all across this house. Let's lift our voices and ask God to touch these needs tonight. Jesus, we ask, O oh Lord, for you to move. We ask, O oh Lord, for you to minister. We know you're able to heal and to deliver, God. Right now, Lord, as we pray, we believe that, God, you're walking into these rooms of these that are sick tonight, Gabby, Buford, and Abby. We pray, God, that you move upon Larry with a bladder cancer, that you would continue to touch Uncle Junior, Lord, and the spot on his bladder. Believe me, Brother Thomas is going to get a good report when it goes for his procedure, Lord. Uh, let it all be in your will, in your hand, Jesus, and we'll be sure to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Now, could we give him a hand clap of praise for working upon our behalf? Praise God. Hallelujah. Blind eyes. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen. Isn't it good to serve God? Amen. Don't you just love reading the Bible stories of all the things that God did in the Bible? Amen. It builds our faith. It lets us know that he has everything under control and how he spoke things into existence and parted the waters and shut the mouths of lions and made an axe head float and all the things made a donkey talk. Anybody believe that God done that? Amen. But you know, I'm glad that it just, those are not just stories in the Bible. We see them things, we see things happening today. Amen. We see miracles today, don't we? Amen. I'm thankful for a God that's the same. Amen. That has not changed. Praise God. Things change all around us. Fashions change. And all kinds of stuff changes. The weather changes. If you don't like the weather today, just wait. It'll change. <laughs> Amen. But God never changes. Amen. He doesn't go on vacation. He's not slack concerning his promises. Praise God. Anybody believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's love him tonight. Hallelujah. Just one word. You calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word. The darkness has to retreat. Yeah. 
tonight. There is nothing that our God can't do. Let's lift our hands together and love Jesus all across this house. My goodness, what a beautiful presence of the Holy Ghost that we can feel tonight. Amen. I'm glad we can just bask in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. There's nothing that you can't do. I cast all my care upon you, for you care about me. I thank you, Jesus, for love and mercy and power and truth. Amen, amen. Y'all got another song you want to sing? Go read your neighbor and say, I love you and I love Jesus. And together we can make it. God bless you. God bless you. Well, we could have a, a special song right now. Brent requested for me and my wife to sing. I want to wish uh, my granddaughter a happy birthday today. Lyric is nine year old. Woo. It took her a long time to read all of her little posts on her Facebook page, she said. I think it, she had a bunch of them. Wishing her a happy birthday. And today is another special day. I want to wish my wife a 43rd anniversary. Woo, today. 43 years, 43 years. Where has time gone? I guess Brent said we could sing the song, you know, walk through the garden of my heart, calm the storms, Lord. I told her on the way to church, I said we could sing, I want to stroll over heaven with you. Another song that we, she said wanted to be played at our funeral, I want us to be together in heaven. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to know here to go. I want to hang around a little while longer. But I know that we're getting closer, every one of us, to going home to be with the Lord. We should look upon the face of our world and the things that are happening around us. We are so close to the second coming of Jesus Christ. We, the people of God, simply call it the rapture of the church. It's the snatching out and carrying away of the bride of Christ. Are you ready? Are you ready for that day? Talked with Uncle Junior yesterday. They found a spot on his bladder there. Not 100% sure, but they're thinking it could be cancerous. And uh, he said, just remember him in prayer, and we're going to do that. And he said, I'm ready to go. I got it all under control. I'm ready to go. Uh, and, you know, that's what we've got to be. The Bible says as a bird that is caught in a snare, Man knoweth not the time of his departure. But somewhere or another, we're going to leave out of this walk of life. Somewhere or another, we're going to leave, whether by a disease or a wreck or accident or the rapture. I want to be ready when Jesus calls me home. Amen, amen. Honey, you feel that singing? 
She said, no. I could sing to her my little song, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. So you could have sung and saved all that. <laughs> well, let me just go into the word of the Lord tonight for a little bit. I know that we don't have a special song. And you know, we've got youth camp that we're going to be spearheading here this next week. And I'm excited about us having uh, a youth camp. I said next week, week after next. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing for our church. I'm excited about the move of the Lord that we had even this past weekend just uh, a great time in the Holy Ghost, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Just a great spirit of the Lord here all day. And I love what God is doing. And I'm expecting God to do greater things, greater things. I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's the 4th of July, 4th of July. Going to be having a fireworks show after church. And we're going to have food. And look at your neighbor and just tell us to bring some extra food. I don't know about you, but I'm inviting people to come. I'm inviting them to come. Come be with us. We're going to have a fireworks show. We're going to have a good time. And I invited some of my uh, diner friends this morning, and uh, two or three of them talking pretty heavily about coming. So maybe we'll have a big crowd that will come on in here Sunday night and want to make some extra. One said, hey, the only way I can come if uh, I can wear my pajamas. I said, just wear them and come on. Just come on. Just come on. If they're not too skimpy, just come on. I did say that, you know. But uh, I don't think there would be. But to get people to come to the house of God is what it's all about, loving them to Jesus. And as we look to this world that we're living in and we look to the second coming of Jesus Christ and as we look to just everything that's transpiring in our world today, my heart's desire is your pastor to see each and every one of you ready to stand before God. I want to be able to stand before him and hear the words well done at the end of this journey. I'd like to just start out tonight in my text into Luke chapter 16 and picking up in verse 19. Luke 16 and 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and just licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died, was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Abraham said, Son, remember thou, in thy lifetime receivest the good things. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. I'm going to stop there. A lot more reading, a lot more talking, going back and forth in this passage of scriptures with this parable, with this story that Jesus was telling. One of the things that he began to speak about was now Lazarus is comforted. Now he is comforted and you are tormented. Would you pray? Jesus, love you again tonight and thank you for the spirit of the Lord that we feel in this house. I'm glad I serve a God that can do anything and everything. And I come before you tonight, Lord, asking for help and for direction and for anointing. God, as we speak forth of your word tonight, let your hand be upon us. Let your spirit talk through us and help us. We pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would everybody say amen? 
God bless you. You might be seated. Thank you for being in the Lord's house tonight. I may do a little preaching instead of just preaching tonight. But I want everybody under the sound of my voice to be saved. I've got a brother that's backslid on God, and I pray for him earnestly, earnestly that God would save my brother, fill him with the Holy Ghost, bring him back, bring him back. It's a beautiful story here. You might say a beautiful story. It is for Lazarus. It is for many people today that would be uh, struggling, so to speak, doing your best to make it, doing your best to live for God. And it may seem like there are people out there just going their own way and doing their own thing and living their own life, and, and, and they're faring sumptuously. They've, they've got big boats, and they've got big cooks, and they've got big houses, but are they really going to be well? Are they really going to be okay? Because one day there's going to come a day of reckoning. One day there's going to come judgment. And we're going to stand before the great God that's a God of mercy and peace and love today. But he's going to change seats, friend, and he's going to step upon a judgment seat. And we're going to be judged then by the life that we've lived down here. And we find the rich man that fared sumptuously. He'd done well, had things going his way. Lazarus, on the other hand, wasn't doing quite so good. He was sores on his body, and the dogs gave him a little comfort when they licked his sores. He, he begged for the crumb that fell. He desired just some crumb that fell from the rich man's table. We don't really read on, on either way whether they had gone to church, where they were doing their best to live for God until after they died. And then we find that after the death that Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom and was comforted and in hell the rich man lifted up his eyes. Brother Blackwell and myself were talking a little while back. Uh, where do you go when you die? Where do you go when you die? They died, and the rich man went to hell, and Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. We talk about going to heaven when we die. We talk about going to hell when we die. We kind of split it up in just a couple of places. Where are we going when we die? Uh, I studied on it a little bit, Brother Blackwell. It's a lot of questions. Uh, he'd been studying on it some and looking into it. There's one thing about it, we're going to eternity when we die. I asked, the Lord spoke the scripture to the rich man, and he said, there's a great gulf fixed between us. And though he would like to come and help you out, he can't do it. He can't get down there. It's, it's a separation. And even though you're there and would like to be here, there's a great gulf fixed. I'm sorry, you can't cross over that. I know there's theories and thoughts and teachings today that would say when you die and you go into Hades, hell, that you can get out and, and you can get a chance to make it right. When you die, as I spoke the other night in my word that I gave unto you, the way a tree falls, that's the way it's going to be laying. If you're living for God and you're serving God and you got it all right with God, you're going to be good. But if you're not, I'm sorry, that's the way you're going to be. So everlasting is the title of my message tonight, everlasting, everlasting, everlasting. He said, you're there, and you're there for everlasting. I'm sorry, you can't get out of that. You can't get back up here now. He can't come down there and pull you out. He can't pray you back out of that. It's, it's a done deal. When you begin to look to heaven and when you begin to look unto hell, it's an everlasting thing. Chapter 9 of St. Mark, verses 43, St. Mark. 9 and 43. And he said, If thine hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. And so, as you look to the Jesus speaking to us here as he starts out in these scriptures, if your hands are fending, if you can't keep it out of stuff and grabbing things and doing things that it should not be doing, it would be better to cut it off and go through life without that hand, to be maimed, to be crippled up, make it into heaven, than to go through life with having both of them and to go into hell where there will be a fire. He said that there would be a fire. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. 
better for thee to enter to halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes and be cast into hell, to hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And I noticed tonight as I was working on my lesson, it said that their worm, I always read it, the worm dies not, or the worm doesn't die, but it's their worm, their worm. Is it a particular worm? Is it a particular person to a worm per person? Or what? what is and, and you look into this, when you begin to study out some on the Word of God, they're quickly to to downplay many uh, of the scholars and of these men that that would study out and deliver this to you. They downplay hell. They downplay the fire. They downplay the worm. Well, it's not. They're talking about a valley that had a bunch of worms and maggots in it that they threw carcasses into and they devoured them. And it's, and it's talking about that. And they try to downplay that hell is not really a place that you're going to burn forever. That, that there's not going to be a worm there. They try to downplay these things. I, I don't know. I, I haven't been to hell, and I don't know what all's going on down there. But as I look to the Word of God, it says that there's a fire going to be there, and it also says that it's not going to be quenched, and it also says well, that the worm will not die. And when you look to the first two when it says, where well, their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, these have been put in by the uh, King James scholars as they began to write the Word of God. But the third time was there. It was a part of the Word that Jesus was speaking into this. And, and as I stand before you today as your pastor, I don't want to downplay the Word of God. I don't want to downplay hell. I want to tell you tonight that there is a place called hell. And that rich man lifted up his eyes, and the Bible said he was in torment, and he was in flames. And again, the Scripture here teaches us that there was a fire there in hell. Where do you go when you die? Where do you go? Going over to the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 20, and I'm going to depend on Sister Sarah here. And it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. The lake, the lake of fire, and it's burning with brimstone. The next verses of Scripture will jump into chapter 20 of Revelations and 10 through 15. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and its false prophet have already been cast into and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever, everlasting, everlasting, everlasting. And it reads on and it says, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face the heaven or the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, their worm, their works, their life, their judgment. It's going to be an individual affair to each and every one of us. It's not going to be just a consecutive group of us that's going to come in and, and God's going to say, all of you know, we're going to stand before God as an individual. And we're going to give an account for our own personal works, how we've lived for God, how we've served God, how we've studied his word, how much we prayed, how much we were faithful to the house of God, how many times we invited somebody to church, how many times we just done our best for God. Our works, our works. It's not talking about going to Copac and working 40 and 60 hours a week. It's not talking about going to your job and, and applying yourself there and working overtime. He's talking about our works for him. How much are we working for God? Everlasting. The next verse of Scripture. 
The sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. I'm reminded of a, a kinfolk of mine, a distant cousin. He was cremated, and he had his remains, and he had them cast out upon the river, just flying down the river in the boat or whatever, and just scattered them down the river, let them Everywhere. It doesn't matter how far you scatter your ashes. It doesn't matter how far that if you die out in the wilderness and, and animals drag your bones and your flesh across the place, one day it's going to be brought back together. One day it's going to come back together. But then we read here in Revelation of this lake of fire and brimstone, and it says now that death and hell were cast into this lake of fire. At the end of it, we read where that hell had fire. Now we're reading where that death and hell both are being cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And then verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire. The Bible speaks of eternity, of eternal, eternal damnation, eternity with God. And again, many downplay these verses of Scripture saying that, you know, you're going to be cast maybe into a lake of fire and poof, you're going to be burned up just like that. It's going to be over. It's done. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so because as I read to you in the book of Mark where they were cast into hell, where the worm won't even die, it's going to be everlasting. It's going to be everlasting. So where the hell is just a little temporary place before the final judgment, which it seems and appears to be, there is going to be a lake of fire if we're not living for God, if we don't have our hearts right with God, a lake of fire that will never go out. It's going to be for everlasting. Where are you going to spend eternity? How is your walk with God tonight? Joshua said in 24 and 15 as he began to get ready to depart the children of Israel, he had begun to lead them from Moses, and now he's come to a place that he's going to be leaving out, and he's giving them a farewell message, you might say. And he said to them, if it seem evil to you, to serve the Lord, just choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a choice today. It's your choice. You can believe the word of God or you can reject the word of God. You can say, I don't believe there's going to be an eternal lake of fire. I don't believe that this good God's going to cast anybody into an old wicked place like that. You've got a choice to believe it either way you want to, but I'm presenting to you tonight the precious word of God. It's going to be everlasting. I want you to think on that tonight. I want you to ponder on that tonight. Where are you going to spend eternity? Where is everlasting going to be at for you? I want us to be together in heaven. I really do. He began to speak here, Joshua did, and he said, the, the gods that your father served that were on the other side of the flood, there were gods there and the Egyptian gods, and there were some that, that served them. They just kind of fell in suit with what they were around. And it's so easy for us to follow what we're around, the group that we're with. If we're with a, a good group of Christian young people, man, that are loving God, that are praying and, and trying to do what's right, it's easy to get in there. But if we get a group of young people that are not so strong to God and they they you know they kind of lean to the wrong side of the tracks and they, they're kind of loose a little bit, you might say, it's easy too to follow into that. Easy for adults the same way to get around a crowd of people that are living for God, a group of men and women that love God. Man, yeah, I can walk it now. I can talk it now. But you get around a group of people that don't care so much about God, that are just, oh, yeah, I go to church, you know, yeah, I sing a song or two in church. But they're not really truly dedicated, and it's easy to follow that suit. And so he's saying, just make your choice what you're going to do, whether you're going to serve the God of glory that's brought you out of all of that stuff or just go back into serving them same old gods. 
And another thing that he brought out, or he said, the gods that's around you right now. God delivered you from some gods. God forgave you from some sin, brought you out of some stuff, filled you with the Holy Ghost, but that does not exempt you from all the devils that's out there. Does not exempt us from all the gods that's going to come against us and to try to overtake us and rule us and control us. So those gods that your father served on the other side are the gods that's right here among us now. It's an everyday battle. It's not getting the Holy Ghost, Sister Emily, and just living happily ever after. We've got to battle. We've got to keep going on. Generate, live for God. Keep praying. Don't give up on God. Brother Parker, it's, it's good living for God. He's blessed us abundantly. But when you get out in life, you're going to find all the junk and the things that's going to come and punch you in the face and, and people around the corner, and there it is. And where did that come from? God help us. God help us. And he said in his word, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Just kind of make your mind, I'm going to serve God. Matthew, Jesus spoke and told us in chapter 6 and verse 24, simply this, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. You're going to love one or hate the other. You're going to cling to one and despise the other. And I've been around people, and I've been in places. When people have been with me, they've been just, you know, kind of calm and easy going, but they run across their buddy that likes to cuss and drink, and they go to talking about different. It's like a Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hyde or whatever. They change. They change. They're different. What? What, what brought this on? Why are you acting like that? Why are you talking like this? Come on. And so we have to be careful. And he says just simply, you can't serve two. You can't go to the honky-tonk on Saturday night, dance with the honky-tonkers, then come to church on Sunday and dance with the saints. This is what he's saying. You can't do that. You can't act one way out there and come into the house of God and act another way. God's calling for us to serve him and to obey him and follow him. We're in a world today, and I'm sorry, and it's kind of kind of irks me a little bit. I don't want to be ugly tonight, mean, and all that stuff. But it bothers me when there's so many people who think that you can go out and live any want to and just go to church and you're going to go to heaven and everything's going to be good. It don't work that way. God's saying in his word, you can't serve. Come on, you have to serve the tithe. I'm no longer going to hang around you. I'm no longer going to have any part with you. I'm going to hold on to God. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. Well, Brother Mayo, how do we know? How do we know? Well, I'm trying. I, I have my struggles. I have my temptations. And you will have them until the Lord comes back. Yes, you will. Kind of get I've talked to some of my elder saints of God. When I say elder, and they, they count me as an elder now. I get some of the discounts because, you know, I'm a senior citizen. Woo! But I talk to some of my elders up in their 70s and their 80s, and they tell me the same thing that I fight, they fight. The same devils that come against me are coming against them too. It's just a struggle against each and every one of us to make heaven our home. It's a choice. You can choose to go the wrong way and choose to do the wrong thing, or you can choose to follow God. When you begin to look to God, we know who God is. He's the supreme being. He's the eternal, everlasting Father. We also know that he is the Savior of the world that Jesus wrapped and manifest in the flesh. But when you look to the word mammon, 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 whoa, it kind of brings on a little different story. Mammon, you can't serve God. And mammon, you think of the devil. We can't serve God or the devil. When you look over the word mammon, you, you can find that it's talking about yourself, your, your centeredness, you. You can't just do what you want to do and act the way you want to act. That's simply what it's saying. You can't serve the world, the things that go on in the world, the things that are not like God. It's simply what it's saying. You're going to cling or hold or re despise or love God, help us to love you, to hold to you, 
to live for you. The book of John, chapter 5 and 39, how do we know? Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. You think you have it. You think you have it. You think, are you ready to meet Jesus tonight? Are you ready to meet the Lord tonight? We don't know. It's shocking so many times the quickness that death comes against people and takes people out. We've lost many people this past year during this COVID season, during this crazy disease. Many came through it, were right at the brink of death, and God spared their life and brought them through it. We don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds, Brother Thomas. We know that we're going to just do our best to live for God. Search the Scriptures. It's going to take the Word of God to get to heaven. We can't go on our own thinking on what we thought it should be or hope it should be. And we're in a world today and you've got social media and you've got so much stuff you can get on. You can watch and listen to so many preachers out there and so many of them are so crazy. I mean, they're just simply so crazy. Some of the things they say, some of the things that they put forth out there, Lord, where do they come out with some of this stuff out? But brothers and sisters, young and old alike, under the sound of my voice or not, you search the Scripture. You dig into the Word of God. When you think you've got eternal life, make sure you've got a hold of the good things and the right things of God. James chapter 3. The book of James chapter 3. And just go over the screen again. Verse 1, several scriptures. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we, have, we shall receive greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that we, they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold, we put and the ships, though they be so great and are driven so fierce winds of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Wherever that, that pilot would desire that big ship to go, he can turn it by just a small helm, a huge ship. Horses that would weigh 1,200 pounds that you can put a bit in their mouth and you can turn them and control them, back them up, let them go, stop them. Wow. So he goes and he says in verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member, boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, and it defileth the whole body, setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell, the tongue, simply what we say, what we say. Every kind of beast of birds, of serpents, and things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed the blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. The word of God is simply saying, can we come to church on Sunday and lift our hands and say, I love God. I give him praise. He's been good to me. He's kept me this week. And go on to a job Monday and cuss. Out of the same mouth comes forth praise and cursing and blessings. And God said, uh-uh, that don't work. That don't work. Everlasting. That's where we're headed to. An everlasting day. How is it with your soul? 
How is it with your life? No, you can't come to church and pretend to be a Christian and then go out into the world and act like the world. Oh, we come to church, we got to act like a Christian. We're among the preachers and we're among the saints and so we're, we're, we're godly. We're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. God's been good to me. Then we go out into the world and we go on the job with those that don't go to church, go to those that curse and go to those that drink and go to those that make uh, crazy comments and we fall in suit saying those things and doing those things and acting that way. God forbid. God says, no, that don't work. I said, that don't work. You're either or. You're either with God or you're not with God. You're loving God or you're not loving God. You're living for God or you're not living for God. Out of the same mouth can protrude sweet and bitter at the same time. God said, no, no, it don't work. I'm talking about everlasting tonight. Everlasting. That's going to be an eternity. Where are you going to spend it at? Where are you headed for it? Isaiah 5 and 14, told you I didn't want to be on an ugly side tonight. I'm just trying to tell you that's coming in eternity to all of us. I want to be ready, and I want you to be ready. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself, opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it, descend into it. God. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, the scripture tells us. Wasn't prepared for mankind. But yet because man's ways are evil, because man turns its back on God, because man chooses to serve self and the world more than serving God, that hell is enlarging in its mouth beyond measure because so many people are falling in to hell. God help us. God help us. It's everlasting. Once you fall into it, there's no coming out. Nobody throwing a lifeline in to get you out. Would you stand with me tonight? My last verses of Scripture, Matthew 25, verses 34, just a few verses. I know we've kind of quieted down here tonight, but I felt to preach this. Verse 34, it says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, my blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. They're going to be judged by what? What are we going to be judged by? Our works. Then shall the righteous answer in him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw thee we in prison and came unto thee? And he said unto them, Verily I send to do inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. You do it to me. You've done it to me. Then, the other side, then shall it say on them on the left hand, depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire. What? Fire. Oh, it's not going to be no fire. It's going to be everlasting fire. You cursed. On the flip side of the coin, those of you that haven't done the right works, those of you that haven't lived true life, depart from me into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. And he keeps going on. A stranger, he took me not and clothed me not. He didn't visit me when I was in prison. And they said, too, when, when do we see you like this? Well, when do we not minister unto you? In verse 45, he said, Verily I send it me to you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. 
everlasting punishment, eternal life. Which do you choose tonight? Which would you choose? I hope and pray tonight that you're choosing eternal life. Sister Angie, if you would, just come on back to the piano and play something soft, and I'm just going to give a, a church-wide altar call. I want us right where we're at. You don't have to come up to this altar. What I'd love for you, if you can't kneel, to sit at your seat. But if you could possibly kneel, I'd love for you to kneel at your seat. And let's just have a good little altar service right now before God. Let us just reach out to Jesus and seek his face for just a moment right now. What do you say? God, search my heart. Dear God, search my mind. Help me, Lord God, I pray, to have everything clear between me and thee. Don't let nothing, oh God, stand between us. Come on, let's pray together.
I pray in Jesus' name. Don't let me walk too far from Calvary. Don't spare the agony. Gethsemane as I should forget the death you died for me and that's why I pray Lord don't let me stray too far Could we sing that together across the house tonight? Too far from Calvary. Don't spare the agony. Lord, don't let me stray too far. Amen. Would you look at your neighbor and say, I believe you can make it. Turn to us. I believe you can make it. I believe you can make it. I'm glad that God has given us a way to make it, that he has promised all through his word that he's known in his high places as a refuge. We can go there and find help. He's known as a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe over and again. Come unto me, all you that labor in heaven late, I'll give you rest. We can make it with God. I can do all things with Christ, which strengtheneth me. Yes, yes, yes. He's on our side. He is on our side. And when we've got trouble, he's there to help us. Again, God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight in the Lord's house. And uh, I feel good being in the Lord's house. Hope you feel as good as I feel. Yeah. Sunday is the 4th. As we said, we're looking forward to a good time. We'll have food and fellowship that night. Bring extra. I'm looking forward to having a good crowd here uh, Sunday night. Then on uh, the 11th, the 11th be the next Sunday after this one. It's... Uh, we're going to need all the help we can, the men folk. Some of you women can probably grab a chair too, move them out. We're going to clean everything out of here. Brother Sumler and his crew is going to come in here that week and going to clean all the carpet, fix it all up for us. Uh, he's got that service. If you need that, I'll throw a pitch in there for you. Don't forget to pay tax. <laughs> but uh, remember that. Then on the uh, 17th is a Saturday. That will be after camp. We'll be closed down for camp that week anyhow. And no service that Wednesday night. And uh, we'll need you back in here on the 17th, all that can to help bring all the cheers back in, the instruments back in, and all this stuff. So remember that Saturday morning, Saturday morning. Also, Sister Angie would like to meet with the choir immediately following our service on the stage. And uh, don't forget that. I'll be gone. The weekend of the 11th, I'll be up with Brother Tracy and Sister Anna up in Mountain City. They've got an anniversary service going on, and we're going to be privileged to preach one of those services. And I've been there 11 years. Great. That's so good. So good. Any other announcements? Stand together with me tonight. After that, we pray choir. Choir, not praise team, choir. Everybody that sings in the choir, come on up. Would you pray together tonight? Lord Jesus, we do love you and we thank you and we praise you. Give you all the thanks, the honor, and the glory 
Thank you for our church. Thank you for our brothers and our sisters, the family of God right here at DPC. Lead us and guide us and help us all, we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. God bless you.